that with the reasonable and well-intentioned ambition to contain obnoxious elements in society has created a society of an extraordinarily authoritarian and controlling nature. That is what you might call the new intolerance, a new but intense desire to gag uncomfortable voices of dissent. I am not intolerant, say many people, say many softly spoken, highly educated, liberal-minded people. I'm only intolerant of intolerance. <laughs> And people tend to nod sagely and say, oh, yes, wise words, wise words. And yet if you think about this supposedly inarguable statement for longer than five seconds, you realize that all it is advocating is the replacement of one kind of intolerance with another. Very wise words by Mr. Bean a few months ago in the United Kingdom fighting for the most integral, God-given, granted right of them all. And that is the right to express yourself freely. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Okudowski of WeAreChange.org. And most importantly, we have to remember that this is an inalienable right that only exists in very few places in this world. And it definitely doesn't exist in China, where its censorship efforts are slowly but surely making its way over to the United States through, of course, the big tech monopolies. Something, of course, that we're going to be discussing in this video in the backdrop of very important geopolitical updates surrounding China, as well as the statement by a UK military intelligence chief that said, quote, China poses the greatest threat to the world order. And we're going to examine that plus a lot more all on this independent media organization that is supported by you. One of the most common donations is literally a $5 donation that we get to sustain our operations. To support us, go to wearechange.org forward slash donate. We just added options to support us through Venmo and even the Cash App, which if you download, you actually even get $5 yourself. And if you're broke, like the majority of the public, there's also even ways to support us without spending a single dime. Incentives, by the way, that most likely will also help you earn a cryptocurrency as one of the top ways we're supported right now is through these alternatives that, that literally don't cost you a single dime. And whether it's Steemit or Hive, these are definitely important ventures to look into since they are becoming integral in our existence. But yeah, all the information is on wearechange.org forward slash donate. The link will be down below. And I'm really curious if there's going to be any interest with the Cash App or, or, or Venmo. Now, uh, relations between China and the United States definitely haven't been at their best. And a lot of Westerners need to realize that when dealing with China, they are dealing with a totally different culture, totally different set of values, and a different way just to do almost virtually everything. Throughout my own personal travels through Asia, it's, it's definitely something to get accustomed to. I would also highly recommend a trip throughout Asia for a lot of social justice warriors screaming out race and racism to really get a reality check to what's happening in the rest of the world. Because let's be honest, in places like China, human rights aren't valued. And if you're lucky, they're an afterthought. As we're getting China recently coming out and defending their, quote, education camps of the Uyghur population, which is a Muslim minority population that is going extinct. And many of them are just surprisingly being disappeared. But according to the Chinese government, this is beneficial for educational and vocational training, like literally being forced in a detention center camp and having people disappear all around you. And don't worry, you don't have to be a Uyghur Muslim in order to be put in the detention center, as of course anyone is who dissents against the government there in that country. And that's what happens in totalitarian states where you don't have the freedom of speech. You have censorship and you have the silencing of whistleblowers, which the big tech monopoly social media companies are literally mimicking by censoring, deleting, and obfuscating a Chinese virologist whistleblower that literally had to escape China in order to present her evidence of the sickness going around, most likely coming because of gain of function studies from a laboratory 
inside of Wuhan, China. Wuhan, by the way, which is doing extraordinarily well from the videos coming out of there, the epicenter of the sickness that just started to allow international flights, and of course is also having massive ragers in huge pool parties with thousands of people who of course are not social distancing or wearing masks at all. Meanwhile, in the United States, we have some elected officials literally conspiring and hiding data and information from the general public that shows that the sickness levels, the official numbers, are a lot lower than what they expected them to be. This should be a great thing. Not many people are getting infected as we thought. Not many people are getting sick. Not many people are dying. This is great news. Not, of course, to the mayor of Nashville that went out of his way to hide low numbers of sicknesses, specifically coming from bars and restaurants. Bars and restaurants that, by the way, had a full war raged against them this year by government that has successfully destroyed many of them. After leaked emails came out showing this public official's efforts to lie to the general public in order to keep up the fear-mongering campaign that politicians all throughout the world are using as an opportunity to grab as much power as they can away from the general public, trying to, of course, mimic China, who, by the way, its, its own people are a lot freer than many places in the United States. It's absolutely crazy to think that, literally, people in China are more freer than we are in the United States because of government officials that fudge the numbers, lie, and in some bastardized way push more suffering and pain on its population, destroying businesses, economic opportunities, making people poorer, making them more dependent on government. And uh, that's pretty messed up. That's horrible. And the absurdity continues in Western nations like Germany we're, we're literally soccer players. They're not football players. Soccer players are too afraid to, to, to come <laughs> near each other. But how are they going to flop otherwise? Anyway, back to the topic of hand here, specifically dealing with China. Obviously, the strong restrictions by the United States will have major severe economic ramifications that will hurt us in the long run. We still are not seeing the larger economic ramifications from the lockdowns. We will in a few months. China, in large part, won't as much as the United States will. China is also slowly decoupling from the United States, as of course we know that the Chinese economy is tied into the American economy, but slowly we are seeing a pulling away all throughout this year in 2020, since of course both of these countries are dependent on each other, but both of these countries are at odds with each other more and more geopolitically. And it doesn't surprise you to know that China, of course, is slowly selling 20% of its U.S. Treasury holdings. It may dump all of them. The little squat and squirrel about TikTok is absolutely nothing compared to the larger ramifications of the United States depending on China for a lot of its medicine, a lot of its PPE, a lot of its antibiotics, a lot of its daily household products. That, in a very small effort, the United States is trying to also decouple from at the same time. The little quarrel over TikTok between the Chinese government and American government is just a small example in one small way that provides an example of this. This is also why we potentially will be seeing a bigger effect on the global economy as, of course, U.S.-Chinese investment is going towards a nine-year low as, of course, tensions mount and many people say there might be a Tissidious trap unfolding right in front of us. Something, of course, that is not good for business, not good for, for anyone. But whether on purpose or on accident or just the situation getting out of hand, it is slowly escalating. It is slowly pushing the pendulum further away from each other, swinging back around, as even recently a spokesperson for the Chinese Defense Ministry came out and called the United States the biggest threat to world peace. This is, of course, after the U.S. Pentagon claimed that the Chinese military poses, quote, serious implications for U.S. national interests. And, of course, both of these governments are using each other as an opportunity to build up the military-industrial complex, which is surely the clear winner here 
out of everything. Not to be outdone, the UK military intelligence chief, Lieutenant General Jim Hockenhull, came out and said, quote, the Chinese regime poses the greatest threat to world order, showing again a big divide between the West and and the east he specifically pointed the gray zone between war and peacetime between the west and the east he said quote china is increasingly authoritarian and assertive which it definitely is especially if you've been watching our geopolitical breakdowns of their very aggressive moves which have been matched by also aggressive moves by the united states and to clarify that world order statement, the intel chief said, quote, it poses the greatest threat to world order, seeking to impose Chinese standards and norms and using its economic power to influence and subvert, backed up by massive investment in modernizing its armed forces, and goes later on, which boasts, quote, an array of leading edge weapon systems that are fast eroding Western military advantages. And I know a lot of critical minded individuals will take the phrase world order and contextualize it with a lot of different backdrops and possibilities and scenarios here. But we also have to remember behind all of this is also the fact that individuals like Henry Kissinger and David Rockefeller were the major proponents of, quote, opening up China, or as otherwise known as creating China as a slave hub for Western consumerism, promoting multinational corporations. That's, that's exactly what David Rockefeller and Henry Kissinger did when they went to China and engineered the current geopolitical situation that has unfolded the way that it is right now. China wanted money. Rockefeller and Kissinger wanted a slave labor force that would make their products a lot cheaper than they would in the Western world that would support, of course, their multinational corporate interests, which would also enrich them. Win-win for the bad guys. That's exactly what happened. And now we have two forces that are building up their military and becoming more dangerous and reckless against each other. And again, this tit for tat foreign policy is a very dangerous game to play. The United States recently had a lot of high profile visits to Taiwan. They are selling them military weapons. Chinese officials are saying that they will make the necessary response to the United, the United States visiting Taiwan. And we have to understand, even though a lot of emphasis is focused just on the military here, the, the war is already being fought, one, financially, and two, also online, as we're seeing data become the new ammunition, and the cyber warfare is already very hot between China and the United States. So is the economic one, and we should do everything in our power to make sure to prevent an actual, real, live one. China has its own kind of manifest destiny. It's going through what they're calling their, their, their growth period. They have goals and aspirations of expanding their empire. And because of that, they're clashing heads, not just with the United States, but also with Japan, also with Australia, and of course, India, where just a few days ago, there was live fire shots exchanged between Indian and Chinese soldiers at, of course, a contested border, which the two have been fighting over for a very long time already. Soldiers on both sides of this international conflict have died, have killed each other, and it's a very pivotal clash point to really keep an eye out since it truly does feel like we are in the beginning moments historically correlated with World War II. And whether we're talking about detention camps or major alliances, we have to understand that the stakes are higher than they ever were. And this news is important to keep up with, important to follow, important to keep an eye on, since of course it will affect all of us. Will there be a hot war? Well, probably not because of assured mutual destruction. Is there already a cyber war, an economic war happening? Yes, that has a lot of implication and effects on you, and this is why I'm talking about it today. If you think it's also important, share this video with your friends and family members. It's more important than ever because if you wouldn't, if, if you wouldn't be watching all the way until the end, if you wouldn't be here, if you wouldn't be getting this video out there, I wouldn't be here. And I'm only here able to do this for you almost every single day because of you, and that's why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on WeAreChange.org. <laughs>